Hello guys and welcome to this pivot table and dashboards class. My name is Dan and I'll be your teacher for the next hour, hour and a half while we are working on this file. This class is going to be jam packed with information about pivot tables, about dashboards and pretty much a bunch of advanced Excel techniques that's that are going to come in really handy for you when you're working in your office, at work, at home, whatever it is that you use Excel. All right, guys, we're going to be working with this file right here. Make sure that you actually grab the file from the download link down below. And um, there's going to be something for everyone. If you're just getting started out with Excel, we're going to spend the first 30, 40 minutes covering what pivot tables are. And if you're already an advanced user, then we're going to be talking about dashboards. That's in the next video. All right. So you might want to skip ahead to that. At the very end of this class, which you're going to be doing something like this, all right? Excuse the Spanish, but this is going to be an interactive dashboard that we're going to be able to build at the end of this class. And you're going to find out how simple it is and how powerful an analysis tool it is, all right? So guys, let's get started. And without further ado, we're going to delve into pivot tables. All right, so the first thing that I want you to notice is in the file, we have this data tab right here. And this is where we have the pivot table, I mean, the, the, the data that we're going to be using. Now, don't worry much about what the data represents. Uh, I mean, I can tell you right now, it's about a, a, gym, uh, a gym clothes store that sells online. And uh, that's going to, what we're going to be working with. But the real important part here is how the data is organized. Now, guys, for those of you that are getting started and some of you that are not, um, one of the things that, that you mess up the most when you're working with, with Excel is how the data is going to be organized. The data has to be organized in a fashion that we call normal. Now, it's pretty much what you're seeing right here, all right? Notice how the titles, they are um, organized. All the titles go out to a right, and all of my data is continuous all the way down. Now, of course, if a computer science major actually heard me, they'd be having a fit. Because normalized tables, they're usually something that, that gets studied for months and months and months on end. But we have to cover it in very little time. So for starters, the first thing that you can do for yourself to make sure that your, your Excel work is so much easier is make sure that your table is organized in this manner, normally, all right? No pivoting, no fancy formatting, no fancy nothing, all right? It's just the data, continuous all the way down. You'll notice that we have thousands upon thousands upon thousands of lines of data, and it's all continuous, all right? All 63,000 lines of data, they're right here. And it goes all the way out and to the right. All right, guys, so that's a normal table. So if you want to get started working with pivot tables in Excel, you have to make sure that your data is presented normally. If not, then you have to work to make sure that it's presented normally. And this is normally where most of my students usually stumble a lot because they, they, can actu they can't actually get a table like this to get going. All right, guys? So with that said, now let's get started with what we can actually do, all right? Once the table is presented as a normal table, then we have to do something else, and this is called an Excel table. What is an Excel table? Well, if you head over here to your Insert button, you'll notice that we have over here a, a Table button right here. All right. Now, this table button is not actually called an Excel table. It's just a table. But I have to find a way to refer to it without actually confusing it with the actual table that we have here. So I usually call it an Excel table. And this is probably the most underrated tool ever to grace Excel. All right. Most people I know never actually use this tool. So what am I going to do with, be doing with this one? Well, I'm going to click Insert. And then I'm going to press Table right here. And um, notice how. I had just one item selected, this online store right here. And the, now I'm get, being offered to create a table out of the entire table. Everything from A1 to L63,222, uh, all right? Just make sure that you had one item selected and that's it. I'm going to press OK right, right now. And now my entire table has converted into an Excel table. Now, what is the point of having done this? Well, it's going to be really useful for my pivot tables, but there's a bunch more of benefits for that, all right? Now, I'm going to start from the least useful to the most useful benefit. Now, least useful benefit of, of converting your data to, to an Excel table is just notice how I'm going to start scrolling down and uh, check out what happens with the column headers. Notice that they get anchored right here on top and uh, they scroll down with me, all right? So, I mean, it's useful, it's nice to have, but it's not game changing. It's not something you're going to be writing your mom about. All right, guys. So 
with that said, what, what else? Well, we get this little formatting right here. Um, it's really interesting, it's really useful. But the best I can aspire to do with this is just change the formatting, all right? If I like orange, I can get orange formatting. If I like green, I can get green formatting. And if I like the original blue formatting that I had before, yeah, I can stick to that as well. All right, guys? So choose whatever, whatever formatting you want. You can actually modify it from here. All right, guys. Now, next thing that I want you to notice is that if I were to add a new column to this table, say, for example, something called... Um, something called, I don't know, income, then notice that as soon as I added this new column, this new title, a new column was added to the table. And after I added the new column, then I could say, for example, multiply the price times 0.75, because let's assume that's my income margin, and press enter. Notice how I get all of my operations. They're all strewn out automatically to the very end of the table. All right. So no need for me to do any pulling and dragging of operations. Just with one simple push of a button, I can get the entire operation added. Now, guys, don't go ahead and try it. Don't go ahead and add this income column. I just wanted to show you this. All right. I'm going to right click here and delete the income column because I don't need it at all. And um, now with that done, with that done, then what I'm going to be doing is talking to you about the most important part of the Excel table. You're not going to understand this benefit until we get to pivot tables, all right? But it's going to be huge. Go ahead and select any piece of data, any piece of data that you wish within this Excel table and go ahead over here to design, all right? So we select any piece of data and then we go over here to our design tab. All right, guys, once we're here in our design tab, here it says table name and it says table one. So what you're going to be doing right here is instead of calling table one, we're going to name it something like data. All right. So it's called data. I press enter. And now this range is called data. Now, every time I refer to this particular range, to this particular table, we're going to be calling it data. All right. And the most important part is that the pivot tables that I'm going to creating to be creating for their own, they're going to be fed from here. That's why I tell you, you're probably not going to understand the benefit right now, but check it out as we go ahead and plow through our pivot tables. Well, this is going to be really important for you to know. All right, guys. So make sure that you put a name that you remember, probably data. I always have a bunch of my students in my classroom that they think they're funny. They put in like really long, complicated names and then they can't remember the name. All right, guys, don't be one of those students, just simple names. All right, guys. With that said, then let's actually get started with what we're going to be working with. I sort of dove into pivot tables without actually explaining to you what pivot tables were. Pivot tables are probably the best thing ever to happen to Excel. Uh, they're going to be doing all the heavy lifting for you. All right. They're going to be doing a bunch of work for you. And uh, there's not that much that you need to do. So uh, pivot tables, if you check out the the manual definition, the definition from the actual Excel reference is going to say something like um, filters with criteria. I've been trying to figure that out for like six years, what it means. I still have no idea, but um, we're going, I'm going to explain to you what pivot tables do and you're going to see the raw power, all right? They're pretty useful for creating any kind of, of summary of the data and most of the calculations that you think you can do with Excel. Yeah, pivot tables will do them for you and they'll do it automatically. All right, guys, so let's get started. What is it that we have to be doing right now? Well, make sure that you are in this uh, first pivot table tab. That's where we're going to be working. And uh, we're going to be following the, the instructions right here. So the first instruction is telling me to insert a new pivot table that shows the sales by date. All right. So I am going to insert pivot, the pivot table one way, and then I'm going to show you another way to do it. I'm going to go over here to my table. I'm going to go over here to where it says insert. Make sure that you select one piece of data from the table, whatever, but make sure that it's one piece of data. Go over here to where it says insert and select pivot table. All right, guys. So it's going to tell me to, it's going to ask me to select a table range that it's called data. So with that said, I'm going to then be asked, where do you want your pivot table to go? And I'm going to tell it, I want it to go over here to an existing worksheet. All right. So select existing worksheet. And then in location, click on here, make sure that your mouse cursor is active and then move over here to first pivot table and press right here. All right. Select any empty cell, the one that you like the most, the one that you trust the most and press OK. 
All right, guys, there we go. We have our pivot table right there and we are good to go. Now, with our pivot table already inserted, I'm going to now go ahead and explain it to you, to explain to you what's going on. This is my pivot table work area. Anything that I modify in the pivot table is going to show up here. And this, the pivot table fields panel, is where I'm actually going to do most of the work. This is going to be your most important tool when working with pivot tables. So make sure that you always have it open. Now, guys, there's two ways for you to accidentally close it. The first one is check it out. I'm going to press, I'm going to click on any empty cell outside of here. And my pivot table has disappeared. So this is going to be good. But as soon as I go click back on any other cell from right inside here, then my pivot table shows up again. So we're good to go on that. And then um, maybe I go ahead and close it right here. All right. Notice how I have a little big red X, well, big green X right here. Well, maybe, I don't know, I'm distracted or something. I go close it from right here. Well, I have a problem because now... Even though I click furiously inside the pivot table area, I can't get my pivot table fields back. Guys, make sure that you pay attention because this is probably my main problem with my classroom students. Um, they don't remember this. So make sure that you pay attention. There's always that one guy, one girl asking, uh, how do I get my pivot fields back, list back? All right, just go right here, right click on the pivot table and you'll get this menu. And down here you get show field list. Click right here and you'll get your, your field list back, all right? Make sure that you wrote the, that down because it's going to be really necessary throughout the rest of this entire video course, all right, guys? So with that done, let's get back here and let's get started. All right, guys, so I have my order, my date, my medium, my seller, blah, 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 but I'm being asked right here to insert a new pivot table that shows the sales by date, all right? So let me tell you a little bit about the data before we actually get started. The data is going to be showing me sales of um, sporting clothes products that took place in an online store throughout a certain period. All right. I think it's all 2017. So I want to figure out how much money actually came into a store by date. Well, if I ask you to do that by hand, you'd probably start adding up. All right. So say, for example, you would grab everything from January, everything from January and add up um all of the prices for january all right guys and then everything for february and add up all of the prices for february and so on and so on and so on well the pivot tables are going to be doing pretty much the same thing i am first going to grab the date right here and i am going to click on it and drag it down here to rows all right guys notice how i get a list of all of my dates um some of them might be in spanish that's because of my original settings i'm sorry about that and uh Notice how I get my dates right here. January, say, for example, we have it right here and we have all of the, of the dates for January. Now, guys, this is because I'm working on a version of Excel that's called Excel 2016. Maybe if you're watching this from Excel 2013 or Excel 2010, uh, you might get something different. Let me show how it looks for you. You probably got something like this, a list of every single date. Now, you want to learn how to group dates from a list into actually grouping them into uh, months or weeks or years or whatever. So it's really simple. Grab your mouse, move it over to any date and right click on that date, all right? Any date means date, all right guys? Don't go over here and right click on the title. That's the one place that you don't want to be clicking on, all right? Any date except the title. And once you get this menu over here, you move over here to group. Press group and it's going to ask you, by what am I going to be grouping by? All right. You can select months, quarters, years. In this instance, we only need months, all right? Select months, press OK, and there we go. We have our grouping done. All right, guys, so we want the total sales by date. We want the total sales by date, in this instance, by month, actually. So I already have my by month part, but the total sales, well, I'm still pending on that. Guys, how would I go about figuring out the total sales? Well, it's pretty simple. The price is what we charge the customer. All right, and if we add up all the prices of all the stuff we sold, then that is what's going to be coming into my store, all right? That's going to be my total revenue. So adding up, adding up the entire price, that's what's going to get me the total sales. How would I go about adding up the total price? Well, I'd grab price from right here and drag it down to values, all right, guys? Down to this values area. And notice that I'm going to get a bunch of numbers that represent how, many, how much money in dollar amounts 
was sold. All right. So let's do some formatting right here. And this is going to tell me that for January, we sold 199,000 grand. For February, we sold 167 grand. And for April, 195 grand. And so on, and so on, and so on. Guys, things that I want you to note. We've been dragging stuff from the fields right here into these four corners of the earth. And um, I didn't explain what, what these were. So I'm just going to start off by explaining the two that we already used. Whenever I grab something and drag it down here to rows, it's going to show me all the possible, uh, all the different data here in rows, all right? So it's going to show me in a row-like fashion all of the data. In this instance, I grabbed date, dragged it down here, and I got all of the dates. And then I grouped that, and now I get all the months in rows. All right, guys. Now, the values, the values right here. Well, whenever I grab something down here into values, that means that I'm going to perform an operation using whatever it is that I grabbed. If I grab price and drag it down here to values, then I'm going to perform an operation using price. All right. And that operation right now is going to be sum. So I'm going to be adding up all of the prices of every single item that was sold in January. All right. Right here, I'm adding up all the prices of every single item that was sold in February. All right, guys. And so on and so on and so on. Okay. With that done, then we can move over to number two. Modify the same pivot table to show the sales by date and sex, all right? So we want to modify the pivot table to show the sales by date, where we have that, and by sex. So we have clothes that are for men and clothes that are for women. And uh, we are categorizing them in this column right here called sex. So these bottoms right here, they were meant for men. These leggings right here, they were meant for women. We have to figure out which one is selling what. So let's go back here to our first pivot table. And since we already know that to separate by sex, we already have a column called sex, I'm going to grab this column right here and drag it over to columns, all right? Now, when I drag something over here to columns, it's going to show me in the first column, the man, and in the second column, the women, all right? The woman. So whenever I drag something over to columns, it's going to show me all the different possible data labels, all the different possible pieces of data. It's true now to the right. Okay, it's true now to the right. And that is going to be showing me, um, well, pretty much, say, for example, the fact that for the men's apartment in January, we sold $94,000. For the women's apartment in July, we sold $123,000. And the grand total for everything was $229,000. All right? So we already have... Uh, we already have our data right here. Okay, so we already have, um, we already used rows, columns, and values, all right? And now say, for example, we're being asked to modify the same pivot table to show the sales and returns by date and by sex only for pants, all right? Oh, I'm skipping in number three. Modify the pivot table to show the sales and returns by date and by sex. All right, so I have to figure out first where it is that I can check out sales and uh, and returns. So always remember, if you don't know where it is you can find something, go back to the data table and figure it out, all right, from actually reading the data table. So here in order type, column G, I can see that either it was a purchase or a return. So say, for example, whomever actually placed order number one, they purchased everything, all right, they, they did a bunch of purchases. But then, right over here, we have something called returns. And say, for example, order number 16 was a massive return of, uh, well, they really overdid it. They returned four, 14 items, all right? So all of this is not actually money that's coming into a store. It's actually money that we, we actually lost from revenue, all right? So guys, what is it that we're going to be looking at then? Well, let's go back to our pivot table and let's grab, what was it, order type? Yeah, order type, column G. So order type, I'm going to grab this one and I'm going to select somewhere to grab it, all right? So I have several options here. Say, for example, I could grab order type and drag it down here to rows below date, all right? So that's going to show me, say, for example, that for February, this is what we have going on right now. Men bought $71,000 in actual purchases. Then they returned $5,000 in, well, in merchandise. And uh, something similar happened for women. 
$85,000 in purchases, $5,000 in returns, for a grand total of $156,000 and $10,000 returns. All right, guys? Now, that's one way to look at it. I could also grab order type, drag it down here to sex, and then get a different way of looking at it. I'd get my purchases for men in February, and my purchases and returns for women in February, all right? And I'd get the difference between one and the other and a grand total of 167,000. Guys, that's it, all right? Now, you're probably going to be asking, and this is something that I get a lot from my classroom students, which one is better? Um, no right answer there, all right, guys? Whichever one you think is easier to read, whichever one you think is easier on the eyes. So, right now, I'm going to leave it at that. I'm going to leave it with the order type in columns. But if you want to leave it with the other type in rows, whatever it is that your heart desires, you can actually do it in the pivot tables, all right? Just make sure that it's easy on the eyes. I get a ton of people doing a bunch of pivot tables with like seven different fields. And uh, the pivot table is actually more complicated to read than the original data. Don't be that person, all right, guys? Don't be that guy. Okay, so number four is asking me to modify the same pivot table to show the sales and returns by date, by sex only for pants. Now, it sounds like quite a mouthful because um, we have like four different criteria right there that we have to satisfy. The sales and returns by date and by sex only for pants. All right, guys? Um, but you'll notice that even though it sounds quite like, like a mouthful, we're already almost there, all right? We're almost there. Um, we already have the sales and returns right here by date and by sex. So the only thing that we are left with is this part only for pants all right how can i go ahead and do this only for pants or bottoms whatever all right the first thing that i have to figure out is where the cat category for pants or bottoms is all right so let's say we have a category called pants we don't so i'm going to end up with bottoms all right that's the one that i'm going to to use all right guys so it's somewhere in the category column what would I go ahead and do? Well, I'm going to grab category from here and I'm going to drag it down here to this little filter area, all right? And when I drag something to filter, notice that what I get is this little extra row right here on top of my pivot table. And that is the one where I'm going to be filtering from. So I'm going to select this arrow down here. I'm going to go over to bottoms and I'm going to press okay. And from there, guys, I am going to, um, well, pretty much execute my filter. Notice how I already have my filter done down, down here. And there you go. All of the numbers that we have here are now exclusively for bottoms or pants. All right. So now I'm satisfying whatever it is that was, I was being asked to do. Modify that same pivot table to show the sales and returns by date, by date and by sex. Everything that you have over here, only for pants. So, guys, I always ask my classroom students, hey, what do you think that filters do? And they always struggle for words because they're trying to find filter without actually using the word filter. Um, no need for that. Filters, they actually filter, all right? They filter out whatever it is that you need them to do. So that's what they're there for. And remember, they show up top right here. All right, guys? Uh, just one little note I want to make because I always see my classroom students struggling with this is that... Um, Filters actually take up space, all right? Take up space on top. If you don't have enough space in your pivot table to actually create the filters up here, you're going to run into trouble. So make sure that you have enough space up here to get this little filter up there. All right, guys. So if you were to get tired of the video and stop right now, you already know pretty much everything you need to know about pivot tables, all right? Or at least 95% of what's necessary. Because pivot tables are this easy. You just grab your data, drag it down here to any one of these columns, and that's it. You're good to go. All right. You're good to go. The pivot tables are done. Uh, the difficult part about pivot tables is not actually creating them or getting to know them from a technical level in Excel. It's actually knowing what fields to use and how to drag them down, where to actually drag them down within your pivot tables. All right, guys, within your, within your fields. So, Make sure that you practice, practice, practice. Don't worry, we're going to have a bunch of uh, we're going to have a bunch of, of opportunities to practice right now. All right. Next up, uh, we're going to be doing the investigation tables, the investigative return. Uh, well, investigate returns. What's going on here? There's an actual story behind this. Uh, there's an actual story behind this data right here. All right, it's based on something that sort of happened to us in, in real life. Um, 
What happens is that this store, this, this is an online store, and there's two ways for online stores to actually make their sales. The first one is they do direct ma marketing, all right? So you, you jump into Facebook or Instagram or whatever, you see an ad for leggings or a sports bra or a hoodie or whatever, and you go ahead and buy it. And that's, that's direct marketing. Now, there's a second way for stores to actually make their money. They go over with, uh, to Instagram influencers and popular people whose only job is to take pictures of themselves. Oh, I kid. I know that there's more job. <laughs> there's more, more to it than that. And um, they tell them, hey, how about you promote our clothes? And for every one of your followers that actually buys one of our clothes, we'll give you a 40% commission on that, right? Or a 30% commission on that. And that's called affiliate marketing. So... Guys, uh, this store, it had a bunch of really strong sales from its direct marketing and it also had some strong sales from um, affiliate marketing. Now, one thing that actually started happening is that returns started skyrocketing towards, towards the end of the year. So, we need to figure out what happened, why are returns going all the way up, alright? Why are there so many returns on our merchandise? The merchandise is not defective. All right, guys, the merchant, there, there's no problem with manufacturing, so something's going on. And that's what we're going to try to figure out right now with our pivot tables. All right. So let's go over here to where it says uh, investigation tables, and that's where we're going to be working with. Oh, I hadn't noticed that the title right here is in Spanish. Pay no attention to it. Let's go right here to investigating the returns. So it's asking me to create a table that shows the returns by date and add, add to it a color scale to figure out when returns start increasing. All right, so we have to figure out uh, about specifically for returns, how they behave through time. All right, so for that, I'm going to create a new pivot table right here in this empty worksheet. Now, if you remember the last time that we created a pivot table, we went back here to this table and we clicked insert, pivot table, blah, 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 all right? That's not how we're going to be doing it. There's a second way to go ahead and do it. It's not that different. Just select your empty worksheet, select whatever it is that you want to insert your pivot table, and then come over here to insert, pivot table, and uh, here where it says table on range, it's going to be asking you where is the data coming from. Now, if you remember, we renamed our original data table by a very specific name. It was creatively titled data. All right. Now, guys, this is when I, why I told you don't get too creative. You get too creative, you're going to forget what the name was of the table and uh, you're done for. You have to go back and check the table and stuff like that. All right. Now, it's asking us where it's going to go. And notice that right here, it's actually asked, telling me it's going to go into the existing worksheet in the cell that I selected, M9. I'm going to press OK on that. And voila, I have my pivot table number two right here with my pivot fields list ready for me to get to work. All right, guys, so how would I go about working on this? Well, it's really simple. I'm going to create a table that shows the returns by date. So let's grab um, date first and foremost and grab it down here to rows. And this is going to show me all of my dates already pre-grouped in the exact same fashion that we had grouped it right here. All right, guys? Something that you might want to take note on is that pivot tables, they always respect the same grouping as the first pivot table that you that you inserted. So if in the first pivot table you group by month, by quarter, and by year, every subsequent pivot table that you create is going to be grouped by quarter, by month, and by year. All right, guys? So no surprise there. Now, it's asking me about the returns. Well, I have no direct way of actually figuring out the returns, but I can figure out the value of those returns. I'm going to grab price and drag it down here to values. Now, guys, remember, this price is adding up both the purchases, the, the stuff that I actually sold, and the value of the merchandise that was returned, all right? Don't ask me about the table. That's the way it was set up. I, I, it, it was a nightmare, all right, guys? I, this isn't the proper way to set up a table, but the, it's what we're working with. All right. So let's create a filter down here. Let's create a filter using order type in filters to actually figure out what the return is going to be. So order type, and let's tell it to just show me the returns. All right, guys? Notice how we start out all nice and gentle in January with $13,000, $10,000, and so on. And then it skyrockets up to the top. In October, we had a horrible month for returns. $31,000 in merchandise was returned. And then December, it goes back down to 23,000. 23, All right, guys? All right, so what's going on? What, um, what's going to happen? 
Well, first and foremost, we have to figure out uh, we have to figure out how is this working. One of the things that I always tell my students is don't strain your eyes trying to look for patterns. Excel can do that for you. So go ahead, use your mouse and select all of my returns right here on my return data without using the totals, all right, without actually getting to the totals. And once I have my return data right there, I'm going to go over here to my home tab and then over here to conditional formatting. And once I'm here in conditional formatting, we're going to grab this nifty little tool called color scales. All right, guys. Now. Color scales, it's easier to show than to, than to talk about them. Just grab the second one. Grab the second one right here, the one that says red, yellow, green color scale, and click on it. All right, guys. So color scales, they're going to color my data based on the size of the value, all right? In this instance, for the color scale that I chose, the smallest value is going to be green, and the largest value is going to be red, and everything in between is going to be shades of that either yellow or greenish, reddish, whatever. All right, guys. So color scales, what they'll do is they'll paint your data based on the value that the data contains. Now, this is really interesting because again, we chose the second color scale because of the way it shows the, the, the colors. The, the smallest values are green and that means that, yeah, it's positive. We had low returns on merchandise and uh, we, we were working with correctly. And then right here, it starts ramping up and uh, it's negative. So that's why it starts showing up these horrible colors of yellow and then red, and then pretty much it's telling us we're screwed. All right, guys, we're screwed on that one. So what we're going to be doing on here, what we're going to be doing right now is looking at how our, our color scale is telling us without actually having us strain our eyes, um, the fact that towards the end of the year, we were doing pretty bad on returns. All right, guys. Now, this is something, I mean, in Excel, we call it color scales, but in real life, we call it heat map. All right. And uh, you can actually create heat maps easily using the color scales and then um, sell your bosses and whomever it is you're presenting stuff to on the, the fact that your color scales are heat maps. Now, I don't know why, but say, for example, when I worked at Big Blue at IBM, people, managers were absolutely insane with love with heat maps all right so whenever i showed up and i just created my little color scale and then i presented to the executives oh i created this awesome heat map for you and the executives were like wow this guy really knows what he's doing he's awesome he's incredible and uh give him promotions and praise and heap everything on that guys I just used the form conditional formatting color scale, all right? So it's all about how you can actually sell yourself and uh, the tools that you're using. But without further ado, you already know how to do heat maps. It's pretty simple. All right, guys. Now, we have to find out where the returns are coming from. So the first thing that we'll do is we'll go for the categories. We'll create a, sh a table that shows the return by date by category. All right, guys, this is going to be a new table. Now, this is uh, an interesting uh, step for me because if you were a classroom student, I told you, go ahead and do it on your own, all right? But since you're watching this online, I'm going to tell you, press pause on the video, try doing that pivot table on your own, all right? A whole brand new pivot table, try doing it on your, on your own, and then come back and we'll check our answers. All right, guys, if you're still right here, it's because you want to see me do this pivot table. Let's check it out. I'm going to go on and select a new empty cell, and then I'm going to click Insert, Pivot Table, and select Data, all right? So I'm going to type in Data right here and press OK. All right, so this is pretty much the standard procedure that we already learned for creating new pivot tables. Now it's asking me, we'll have to find out where the returns are coming from. So create a table that shows the returns by date by category. It's pretty much something similar to the one up here, but using categories. All right, so I have several options right here on how the pivot table is going to be laid out. The first one is I'm going to grab date and drag it down here to rows. Then I'm going to grab price, drag it down here to values. And finally, I'm going to grab order type, drag it down here to filters, filter to just show the purchases. I'm sorry, the returns. And then what I'm going to be showing is category, drag it down here to columns. And this is going to be a little bit hard to read, all right? This is going to be a little bit hard to read because of how it opens up all the way out to the right. Now, I have another alternative. Change category and date, all right? Change category and date 
uh, make sure they change positions. So category goes back down here to rows, date goes up here to columns, and uh, ah, all right, guys. I'm not exactly sure that this is easier to read, but I'm going to leave it at that. All right, so let's check out if anything jumps out at me. Um, probably not. What I'm looking for is to see if um, something has more returns than, than it should. And uh, for that, I'm going to be using my color scales again. Now, how would I go about applying color scales here? Well, the only rule for color scales, guys, is just to make sure that you never grab, never, ever, 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 ever grab the grand totals either to the right or at the bottom. All right. That's the only rule. Never grab the grand totals because they're, just going, they're, they're going to screw up your color scales. So I'm going to select my data right here without the grand totals. Go over here to home. Go over to conditional formatting. And then right here in color scales, I'm going to select my second one. All right, guys. So I have here my heat map. You'll notice the color red starts showing up at the end. All right, starts showing up at the end of the year. And the, um, our main problem is bottoms, hoodies, and jackets. All right, and leggings, sort of. But I had an issue with that because they're the ones that sell the most. They're, they're the ones that sell the most. All right, socks. I mean, how could socks represent something important in returns? Well, let's figure this out. I could organize all of my data from largest to smallest. Now, this is something that you don't know how to do yet, but I'm going to show you how, and it's really simple. Just go ahead and click on any single one of these grand totals right here. Then you go over here to data and you sort from Z to A. All right. You sort from Z to A, this little button right here. And this is going to allow you to sort from the biggest returners to the smallest returners. All right. They also happen to coincide with sales. So I'm not exactly inclined to say that jackets and sweaters are the source of all my, of my evil because you'll notice the jackets and sweaters, well, they were pretty normal in returns at the beginning of the year. And then something, something happens after June that they shoot up, all right? Everything is shooting up after June. So this, this wasn't a good avenue of investigation. This, this wasn't good enough for us. So that's why we have a number three. Insert an error pivot table that shows the returns by seller by date. All right. This would be your fourth pivot table that we do in the file. Again, guys, um, if you actually want to try it out on your own, I heartily recommend it. Make sure that you uh, press pause on the video and create your pivot table. And if you're still here, then it's because you want me, you want me to show you how to do the pivot table. So let's go ahead and do it. Select an empty cell somewhere where you can actually work. Press insert, pivot table, and then type in here, data. All right. Okay, guys. So with that typed in, then we're going to start working. Um, say another pivot table that shows the returns by seller by date. I'm going to grab date, drag it down here to columns. All right. Why? Why uh, to columns? Because I have a ton, a ton of sellers. All right like a bunch of them. So there's no way I can fit all of them within my, in the, in the column format. All right, so let's grab seller, drag it down here to rows. And then let's grab price down here. And finally the order type, drag it down here to filters. Notice how my filter showed up here and it sticks to the bottom of this pivot table right here. So I don't like that. I'm going to insert a couple of new uh, lines. Make sure that it actually fits. All right, guys. So let's show the returns. Let's show the returns. And notice how I get a bunch of holes in my data. All right. No, notice how I get a bunch of holes in my data. That is because a lot of these sellers had no returns marked to stuff that they sold uh, for that month. So we have this guy that's called Abraham Ohikar, whatever. He had, I mean, a lot of his merchandise was returned except in August, right? Nothing was returned. And then we have this guy called Adam Goneron. No returns, all right? He has very, very little returns. So this guy is actually one of the guys that we want to have selling our stuff. So uh, this is really hard to read because um, I don't know who is doing the most returns. There's two things that we can do. The first thing is a heat map. The second thing is sorting out my data. So let's sort the data out. 
Remember, select any item from the grand total, go over here to your data tab and select sort it out from Z to A. All right, this is going to sort from the biggest returner, I mean the big, the, the big, the seller that's responsible for the most returns to the seller that's responsible for the least returns. And this guy, in this case, this this woman, I think, Nana by Serna, uh, she just had, she was responsible for a return of $222, all right? Whereas these two, well, they seem to be responsible for a bunch of returns. Let's confirm that using our heat map. I'm going to select my entire pivot table right here. And I am going to go over to where it says home, conditional formatting, color scales, and grab the second one. And yes, yes indeed, our returns are spiking because of these two sellers right here. These two girls, they are responsible for well, a bunch of returns, all right? 40 grand and 36 grand in returns out of a total of 231 grand in returns for the entire store. So just using pivot tables and heat maps and, uh, well, the data that we're using right here, no, no fancy analysis, no complicated math formulas, we've already solved the problem. These two girls over here, they are responsible for a bunch of returns. So. Guys, notice how simple it was, how playing detective with using pivot tables was uh, really straightforward, uh, a really straightforward case because the pivot tables did most of the operations for us, all right? They did most of the heavy lifting for us. They did uh, the sums, they did the filtering. Pretty much everything that we had to do was grab our data and drag it down here one way or the other, all right, guys? All right, so what happened in real life was that, yes, effectively, we um, the store included two new influencers in, into their their affiliate network. And uh, these two girls that were running some sort of scam, they um, asked their followers to go to go ahead and buy the merchandise. The girls would, would get a cut of that. And then the, they told their followers to return the merchandise. The girls, um, they keep their commission and the store would be on the hook for whatever mer merchandise was returned. All right, guys? And uh, yeah, that commission was shared along with whomever was perpetrating the scam. So of course they were cut off and sent on their merry way. All right, guys? Um, all right, with that said, we are done with pivot tables. Now we're going to do one last thing, which is going to be doing learning about charts, which are really, really, really important for you to get to dashboards. All right, guys? Okay, so let's get to charts. We're going to have to cover that in order for you to get to, to uh, the dashboards. And charts are really the simplest thing ever in Excel. All right, so let's go ahead and talk about charts. Now, of course, in the online course, we cover charts much more in depth. But if you want to learn how to do charts quickly, Excel has you covered, all right? So the basics of all chart in Excel is a pivot table. Now that wasn't true in the past. You had to create your own little table by hand. But right now, uh, Excel, pretty much everything is created using pivot tables and charts, all right? Pretty much everything is created using pivot tables and charts. So how to go ahead on that? Okay, so we're being asked to create a pivot table that shows the seven products that sell the most for women. And then, of course, we're going to chart that using a bar chart. Um, so let's go ahead. Remember, every single chart that you want to create, you have to create a pivot table first. All right, so if you can't express your data in a pivot table, you can't express it in a chart. So we want to, to list the top seven sellers for women. All right, the top seven sellers for women, top seven selling products. Um, let's create a pivot table that shows that. So let's go over here to our charts, uh, to our charts uh, page. Let's come over here to insert and insert a pivot table that's coming over from our data. All right, guys, so we have our pivot table right here. You should be able to do it on your own. I highly recommend you press pause and create your pivot table on your own and then come back and check it out. All right, so if you're here, it's because you already did the pivot table or you want to figure out along with me. All right, guys, so we're asked for the top seven products. The first thing that I'm going to grab is the product, drag it down here to rows, and we have about 100 products in the, in the store. So yeah, that's going to work. Now, uh, let's figure out how much each product made. So let's grab price, drag it down here to values, and we have how much money it, each product sold. However, however, this isn't how much money each product sold because get thanks to the horrible way the data is presented this also includes returns 
so I have to filter that out. I'm going to grab order type, drag it down here to filters, and just select purchases. All right, this shows me all the data on purchases, all right? And now I'm going to create a pivot table that shows the seven that sell the most for women. Well, I still haven't filtered out for women. This includes data for men. So I'm going to grab sex, drag it down here to filters, and select women, all right, women. All right, now this, this little filter that I created right here, this actually shows me how much, um, how much actually was sold to women, but I still only want the top seven. All right, guys. Now, a lot of my students, they don't know how to filter by top seven. So what they do is they select any one of these prices, they go over here to data, and then they sort it by largest to smallest. All right. And then they count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and there we go. Teacher, these are the top seven ones. All right, no, that's useless. All right, guys, don't be that person. Uh, there's a very simple way for you to filter out the top seven, and it is right here. All right, so go over to row labels, go over here to where it says row label, labels, select this little item from here, and bring yourself down to value filters. Once you're here in value filters, click on it, and then drag yourself down here to top 10. All right, I know I said top seven, but you need to get to top 10. Click on top 10 and we get this little dialog box. And this is where you can actually tell Excel, I don't want the top 10, I just want the top seven. So delete the 10, type in the seven, press okay, and there we go. We have now a table that shows me the top seven sellers for women. The biggest seller from an amount perspective is going to be the weather resistant running jacket, all right? And the smallest of the big sellers, sellers is going to be the essential seamless bra, all right? Okay, now again, this is gonna be a little bit controversial. Some of you guys might be thinking, all right, but that's in dollar amounts. What if I wanted it in uh, quantity, all right? It's going to be different because the weather resistant running jacket, that's a really expensive piece of, of uh, clothing and it's probably not the biggest seller in quantity. Well, it's really simple. Guys, grab your mouse and right click on any one of these amounts. Grab your mouse and right click any one of these amounts. And then go down here in this menu that shows up and tell it to summarize the values by count, all right? And this is going to show you the amount of items that were sold, all right? Notice how they all changed. Now, the seamless panties, those were the ones that sold the most in quantity wise, all right? And the seamless burlesque was the smallest seller of the big seven, all right? Now, this is up to you and whatever it is that be that's being required of you, all right, guys? Instructions were not clear here, so I'm going to assume that they refer to the biggest sellers in dollar amounts. Right click here, summarize values by sum. All right, let's leave it in dollar amounts. All right, guys. Now, let's create a bar chart. This is what you actually came here for that shows what is reflected in the pivot table. This is the easiest part of anything, all right? Just click on any part of the pivot table, make sure that you have any part of the pivot table selected, and then go over here to where it says insert. Once you're here in insert, once you're here in the insert part, guys, um, you're going to go over here to where it says charts, and it's asking me to create a bar chart for that. So my bar charts are right here. I'm going to select my little arrow, and I'm going to select the first chart. Now, there's a bunch of theory about charts and how to create uh, intelligent charts that are worth reading and everything, but that's for the online course. Right here in Excel, it's really simple. I'm just going to be talking about this chart right here, all right? So there we go, guys. We've inserted a new chart that's showing me all of the biggest sellers, all right? And now, let's format that chart. Let's format the chart and um, I make sure that I have the chart selected and right here on top, I'm going to go over to my design tab, all right? I'm going to go over to my design tab. That is where Excel is going to be offering me a bunch of different uh, formatting options on how I want to view my chart. So let's click on this little arrow right here and uh, let's select something that we like. For this particular case study, I'm going to be selecting style number four, all right? You don't have to get married to it. I just like style number four. You can pick any other style, all right, guys? And there we go, we have our chart. Let's remove everything that we don't need. Say, for example, this total title is horrible. I'm going to do something else. 
It's going to be called Top 7 Sellers for Women. All right? Or Top 7 Selling Products for Women. All right, guys? And uh, I'm going to delete this total right here. And I'm going to remove these gray buttons. These gray buttons, they are a drag to remove if you don't know how to do it, but really simple when I tell you to. All right, so grab your mouse, right click on any one of the buttons, and in the, in the menu that shows up, go over here to where it says hide all field buttons and chart. There we go, all right? I've hidden all of the field buttons and chart, and now I have something that's more presentable. All right, guys, again, remember, in the online course, we're going to be covering everything about charts, but right here, just wanted to show you how to make a very simple chart based on a pivot table. Any change that we make to a pivot table right here is going to be reflected on the chart. And any change that we make on our original data, say for example, we have more data or additional data or better data, it's going to be automatically reflected on my pivot table and thus on my chart. And that's the beauty of it, all right? That's the beauty of how pivot tables work. All right, guys, one last nifty trick that I want to show you is the data slicer, all right? I want to segment my sales by medium, all right? Either influencer or on page. So what does that mean? Well, easier shown than explained. Grab your mouse, click on any single item right here in my pivot table. Go over here to where it says data. I'm sorry, go over here to where it says analyze and click right here where it says insert slicer. Now slicers are some kind of filters that are easier on the eyes, all right? That's pretty much it. So I'm going to get this menu right here and it's going to ask me what do I want to filter on. I'm going to filter by medium. So make sure that medium is checkmarked, press OK. And here we get this, all right? So this is a slicer. If I wanted to check my sales that were made from my own page, and I just click here and I get my data for the sales on my own page. If I wanted to select my sales that were made via influencers, then I click right here and I get the data. All right, and if I want to delete my filter, go back to the way it was, then I just press here, and that's it. All right, guys? So this is pretty much an alternative filter to my pivot tables and to my charts. Instead of actually using this filter up here, I can use the one down here. When do I use one and when do I use the other? These filters are a little bit more permanent. I mean, it's not that I can't change them, is that once I set them up, I'm probably not going to change them. Whereas the slicers here, they're interactive. They're meant for you to create your file and then turn it into your boss or to your coworkers or whatever and let them play with it. All right, guys? So that's it. We've covered uh, tables. We've covered pivot tables. We've covered how to carry out an, an investigation with a bunch of different pivot tables. And then we covered charts and slicers, all right? Not bad for uh, 50 minutes of class. All right, guys, in the next video, we're going to be doing dashboards. And it's going to be a really important part for you because those dashboards, they're going to be really, really impressive. So stay tuned and make sure to check out the next video. Do you want to be an Excel god? Our online course will turn you into an Excel master in only 90 days. Excel is the most important tool in the office, but almost nobody knows how to use it. Most people dive right into Excel with no formal training and never use the right tools. And thus, they end up delivering mess reports that are full of mistakes and they end up hating their jobs. In reality, Excel is really simple to use and can do your job for you, if you know how to use it. But you have to pick the right place to learn from, or you'll only end up more confused with all of the different tools and functions that Excel has to offer you. So, what can you do? Our Excel course is tailor-made for you. We're going to teach you Excel, all of Excel, using real-life examples, from simple exercises to full-fledged business case studies. Take the online course and you'll be an Excel god in only 90 days. The course consists in more than 45 lessons and 15 case studies, all with their detailed solutions completely recorded in video, and you're going to be able to access them whenever you want, whatever you want. Best of all, you're going to have lifetime access to the course and you're going to get any of the updates that we're constantly putting out for free. Even better! When you get our course, you'll have free access to our full Visual Basic and Macros course and also to our Power BI course, all with just one single purchase. More than 3,000 students have passed through our classrooms. We've attended companies like Kodak, IBM, Samex, HP, Continental, DB Schenker, and more. So, if you want to absolutely master Excel, make sure that you sign up now. You will become an Excel guy. A2 Excel.